And welcome back. For months, much of the county's attention has been on the continuing sexual harassment complaint and the ensuing promotion of the former Paint Branch High School principal. A particular concern is the failure by the Montgomery County Board of Education to address questions that the public had. In an interview with Fox 5 reporter Tom Fitzgerald, County Executive Mark Elrich criticized the silence of the school board. To not, and, he sa as, and he said, to not express some kind of concern, I, I don't understand. You should be able to say, yes, there ought to be an investigation. There ought to be consequences if we find the people in the administration in the school system covered things up or weren't forthcoming. Nancy, today there was some reports about a hearing that was conducted yesterday with the school board superintendent uh, and the head of the school board uh, before the county council. Has the school board and the, and the and the superintendent handled this sca this scandal properly? Well, number one, uh, these are allegations. Number two, uh, that person involved has been on put on leave. Uh, number three, you're an attorney. I'm an attorney. What would you tell your client to say about this? Nothing. It's it's being dealt with. Uh, you know, what's interesting to me about this, uh, you know, there are 160,000 kids in the Montgomery County school system, plus or minus. They've got 25,000 plus employees. And what are we talking about the past three months? One person. This person, uh, I saw a picture of him on um, in a, a post. He's black. That probably complicates uh, their analysis. Paint Branch High School is 60% black kids, 23% Hispanic, 11% Asian. That was last year. The numbers are probably a little different right now, but around there. So they have a very diverse school. Uh, there are 8% uh, male uh, principals or administrators in the whole system, in the whole system. 7% of the principals and administrators are black. It's a whole nother kettle of fish for the school board to deal with. So, you know, it's a complicated situation again for them. And remember, as my I keep saying, this is a state agency. So they can be hauled up. Uh, they can be polite. They can respond to questions to the extent that they can. But as their attorney, I would advise them to keep their mouth shut until um, it's finally resolved. I'm sure it will be handled. It's being handled in some way at this point. You're never going to know all the details. And you of all people would know that Casey is an attorney. Um, not, this is not a public uh, forum particularly. Know that the issues have been raised and they have been tentatively, uh, they're being looked at. You know, uh, pre you know, people are going to go go for the platform to say things. The council has an obligation to do something. The county executive was asked something. He said something. Not much. That's the that hassle. That's the challenge of being within the legal system, where there are ramifications each way. Well, uh, Stacy, yesterday it was revealed in in the hearings that uh, Monifa McKnight was not aware of these allegations when uh, she promoted the gentleman to be principal at uh, Paint Branch High School. So there, are, there seems to be a lot of questions, again, as to how the process within MCPS uh, was conducted and questions as to whether or not, and Nancy correctly points out, there are privacy issues involved here that have to, that have to be respected. But shouldn't, this, shouldn't there be more forthcoming information from the school board? Absolutely. And I can't speak for Monifa McKnight, and I did hear that, that that's what her claim is. So I'm going to believe her. Um, but the question is, who knew and when? And that's what the inspector general needs to get to right now. And Nancy, you just mentioned a moment ago, you're an attorney and Casey, you are as well. And if you are with the Jackson Lewis law firm that had been called in initially to investigate this, I would imagine that you two probably would have said, this is not a good idea because we've been counseling you on other subjects and defending you on these other subjects and taking an arm's length approach to this. And Nancy, I also don't believe that because the, the presumed perpetrator here is black, that he's getting extra protection for this. He had 18 complainants come forward, whether they did it initially by and anonymously or speaking up. And this was basically swept under the rug. 
So the question again is, who knew? Why didn't they reveal this? It reminds me very much of the Penn State fiasco that happened when Jerry Sandusky was finally convicted of child molestation. And the person who first saw him molesting a child in a shower in a locker room and reported it to the godfather of football, Joe Paterno, then it, it, Paterno took it to the athletic director who took it to the chief of security at Penn State. What did they do? They swept it under the rug. And so these things eventually come out. And this is, unfortunately, Montgomery County right now has a branding issue. They've got a branding issue with parents in this county. And now they have a branding issue because of this particular issue. They have a lot of issues. And they are riding on the fumes of their once illustrious reputation. They have a lot of work to do. And by the way, where are the teachers unions in all of this? Why aren't the teachers unions in there defending these teachers? Why? Because they're spending their energy going after all the parents out there that are the far more formidable predators in their minds. Well, thank thank you, Stacey. You know, this again, I, I will I will tell you from from my experience that um, sexual harassment allegations in an organization are some of the most um, uh, sensitive I issues because they're you know that people make do make false allegations but they also are uh, true allegations and they're they're generally treated with great respect and great you know great sensitivity by the organization nonetheless I do think the uh, school board through its through its own actions hasn't been hasn't handled this very well or very skillfully they could they could have done better so, but there's. Um, that, I, uh, I hope at some point we get to talk about what's really going on, which is how are our kids doing on uh, reading scores? That how, how how are we measuring success? How are 160,000 kids doing? Uh, you know, we get distracted by these little itty bitty things, and nobody pays attention to the big picture. Good for them, bad for us. Well, uh, Nancy, I, I I I think that's a great way to conclude this which is we need to focus on performance of our, of our students and what is being taught to them uh, going forward.